Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, we will continue our discussion of logistic regression. Let's take a very simple example for classification where we have two sets of points. Uh, one set of points have a complete black dot and the other set of points have a hollow black dot. And we have these two sets of points and we want essentially to learn a decision boundary that separates these two sets of points. And the red line here is the decision boundary. So this is the decision boundary that separates these two sets of points. We are looking at a binary classification problem and our goal is to learn this decision boundary. Now, let's look at what forms that this boundary could possibly take which would make the functional form desirable so for example we let's if we have such a boundary where with very sharp corners here we have a sharp corner here we have another sharp corner and we have this decision boundary so this decision boundary does it separate both of these sets of points? The answer is yes, but this decision boundary is not a desirable functional form because it's not differentiable at these points. The yellow points refer to the places where it's not differentiable because it makes this sharp turn and at this point right here it is not differentiable. And we have seen in when we calculated maximum likelihood and maximum a posteriori um, estimation techniques in those te techniques we have seen that differentiation is a very useful tool used for estimating the parameters and if our functional form has some parameters and we want to learn them we want to be able to differentiate it so that's why this is not preferred and we instead look up to a very established and very um, easy to use and also differentiable functional form which is known as the sigmoid function so the sigmoid function is how the how logistic regression gets its name so logistic function or the sigmoid function it has this form of one divided by one plus e to the power of minus z and we'll look at all these different quantities a little more in detail in the next few slides. Uh, but it has this kind of shape here that's drawn out. So this is the sigmoid function. Sigmoid or also called the logistic function. So the logistic regression model uses the logistic function and it assumes this logistic functional form for p of y given x we saw that in the first video where we looked at generative versus discriminative models we called logistic regression a discriminative model because it directly learns p of y given x and here we are going to say that p of y given x has the logistic or sigmoid functional form. We are going to make this assumption when we are going to use logistic regression for a machine learning problem. Okay. So, a little more in detail. So, here we have P of Y equal to 1 given X. So, we are assuming a binary classification problem and we are going to derive the form based on that but we can see we'll see later that it can be extended to multinomial um, multi-class prediction using multinomial logistic regression so here we have y is equal to one so this is one of the classes in y and we are saying it's binary so it ha can take value zero or one so here we have y is equal to 1 given x and we are assuming a functional form for this guy 
probability of y equal to 1 given x to be equal to 1 by 1 plus exponent of w0 plus sigma i is equal to 1 to n wi xi. So now let's go into the exponent to understand this. So the 1 by 1 plus exponent of something that is the general logistic form, form of any logistic function or sigmoid function. So that is follows the general, follows the sigmoid function. So now let's look at what's inside the exponent because that is where our data comes in because we have xi here. So this is where all the magic happens, right? So we have w0 and we have wi xi. So w0 is called the bias term. And wi xi is weights of different features in our data. So xi corresponds to feature number i and wi its corresponding weight, weight of feature i. right and this weight these weights wi and w0 are what are the parameters of this model so any model we saw that in point estimation that we there are parameters to functions and then when you learn the parameters you learn essentially learn the function and then you can use it toward classification right so in this in this model in logistic regression the parameters are these are parameters the weights are the parameters so the weights using your data you are going to learn the weights at training time so parameters learned at training time and used at test time Right, so W0 and each weight corresponding to each feature is learned from by using the data. So we saw that for just two features, we have one small one. So let's go back so I can look at the curve. Yeah, so for X, logit of X looks like this, this curve here. So this is when you have one x so x to logit of, logit of x logit of x or logistic of x or sigmoid of x all refer to the same thing so logit of x is nothing but y so because if you have y given x is what is logit of x right now if you have more than one feature let's say two features then you have something you can still imagine it because humans are capable of imagining th three dimensions so you can still visualize it you have x1 and x2 so this is nothing but x1 is nothing but feature one x2 is feature two and the curve itself the third dimension is nothing but p of y given x where x comprises of x1 and x2 so till three dimensions you can visualize it and you have two features and p of y given x and it would look like a plane which is curving similar to a sigmoid in two dimensions but now it's like a plane which curves like in an s shape so that's how it would look if you have three dimensions if you have four five dimensions or the number of dimensions is equal to number generally number of features so if you have two dimen two features then it looks like this and if you have more than two three dimensions uh, three features then three features 
and with respect to your p of y given x it would become four in all and you cannot really visualize it but it would be an n-dimensional hyperplane curving in an s as shown here for three dimension so for n dimensions where n minus 1 features and nth feature is in sorry nth dimension is p of y given x then you have an n dimensional hyperplane curving in an S shape. This is just for intuition to understand how the function would look if we were to plot it. Just for visualization purposes, just for understanding purposes. To, so you can appreciate how the model looks and when you when you are coding it up or when you are using it. Okay, now understanding sigmoids. So we have one divided by one plus a raised to w zero plus sigma over i w i x i and for different weights combinations of w zero and w i your curve would look, look different this is very similar to what we saw in the beta distribution with different parameter values your curve would look different and that's how it attains its modeling capabilities. Because the curve looks different, it can either fit around the data in a certain way and that could either give you better or worse performance. So if your values of W are learned to fit the data correctly, then it would give you better performance. So it the shape of the curve determines your performance depends on where your data points depending on where your data points are okay so now just understanding the functional form again we have y equal to zero given x modeled by one by one plus e raised to w zero plus sigma or i is equal to one to n w i x i if we pick we can pick either one y equal to zero or y equal to one and then model it as a sigmoid because essentially if we have two classes if we pick one of them to be sigmoid the other one would be one minus p of y equal to zero given x so how would you get p of y equal to 1 given x, that's nothing but 1 minus p of y equal to 0 given x, right? So essentially, you, you can pick any, you can pick either the, the sigmoid function for either y equal to 0 or y equal to 1. It's the same because the other one is going to now be 1 minus um whatever you pick as the sigmoid and then because it doesn't matter what you pick because when after you pick this you're going to design the equations to learn the weights and the weights are going to be learned accordingly after you pick this fun whichever one is equal to the sigmoid and we'll see that in the next uh, video um, so far I hope you're understanding how we are assigning P of y equal to x to be equal to sigmoid and after you have learned the weights you can substitute them and in both of these equations p of y equal to 0 given x and p of y equal to 1 given x and whichever is higher is what you would predict to be the value of y after you've learned the weights you're going to use that for classification right so then you substitute substitute what weights you learned and then you calculate both these values p of y equal to zero given x and p of y equal to one given x and whichever is higher is your prediction
And to make that a little easier, we can also do something like this, where the calculation of the final prediction becomes easier. So what you can do is you can divide one by the other because they have the denominator is the same for both of these. You, you can simplify this calculation by getting rid of the denominator. And you can say that if p of y equal to 1 given x by p of y equal to 0 given x is greater than 1. If it's greater than 1, which it means that p of y equal to 1 given x is greater, right? So this is greater. If this is greater, then your prediction is, is y equal to 1. And when you divide, the denominator goes away, this part. And you have exponent of w0 plus sigma i equal to 1 to n w i x i, this part. This is the only thing you have. And you don't need to calculate e to the power of this because essentially you just want to know which is greater, right? You don't want to know the exact value of what this computes to. You on, only want to know if y equal to 1 is greater or y equal to 0 is greater. Then you can take log and simplify. If you take log both sides, you would get log of exponent w0 plus sigma i equal to 1 to n wi xi greater than 1. And then if you take, sorry, log 1, right? So if you take log on both sides, then the log goes in, they cancel, log 1 is 0, then you have w0 plus sigma i equal to 1 to n, wi xi greater than 0. So you just compute this part here and see if it is greater than 0, and then you will know which is the prediction. If this is greater than 0, we are saying that y is equal to 1. If it's less than 0, then we know that y equal to 0.